Happy Monday, friends. Welcome to a special edition of Live from E. Will, Aaron, and Mel Melanie hanging out with you guys uh, along with our special guest, Mr. Harry Hamlin. Welcome. Hey. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. That's my pleasure. <laughs> so Harry's here to talk about, as I mentioned on Friday, a film called No Alternative, which is uh, made its debut on Amazon Prime, on iTunes, on um, a video on demand. It's based on the novel of the same name. Um, it, the film is a, it's a coming of age drama, which highlights sort of the 90s grunge era through music and teen angst. It centers on 17-year-old Thomas, who's determined to get his start in a grunge band, and his sister, Bridget, whose behavior, behavioral issues lead her to create a hip-hop persona called Bree to B. Uh, it was written and directed by a friend of mine, Will Dickerson. Yeah. Congrats, Will. And great he's job. great. Will's by, by he the way. He is. So let's, uh, we'll take a look uh, at the trailer, and then we'll get into it, all right? Okay, sure. Here we go. When public oh, officials yes. are threatened, it's a security yeah. risk. I'll cut Just right to the chase. Her. I got a handgun. Shootings are ten times more likely to happen Please in a Please don't lecture me on crime statistics. Just like her, just like All right, guys, check this out. If we submit a demo and they like us, we get to play in a battle at the Capitol Theater. You know those guys? Yeah, they're in the class. They're a bunch of posers. You want to go for a drive? You got a car? I have to go with your daughter. Head better. <laughs> We have no choice. We told you, if you lose control again, we're going to send you back. We can't give you the supervision you need. I don't understand what's wrong. No, I will not let it be, damn it! So the film really nails, like, the 90s aesthetic. It's the, the Kurt Cobain grunge thing that, uh, uh, kind of passed me by, but uh, I've actually never owned a pair of Converse in my life. Wow. Uh, I know, hard to believe, right? It's really? Like this whole Converse thing happened starting in the 90s, and it's all still happening now, yeah. and I do not have a pair of Converse in my closet, so... Uh, so what, what if that's sort of the music passed you by, what was the what was the draw for you in the In, in the, the film? film? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it doesn't have to be any particular period. I mean, it, every generation goes through this. For me, it was Bob Dylan and the mm -hmm. Beatles and all that. For them, it was Kurt Cobain and Nirvana and that kind of, that paradigm. Uh, but, you know, it's, this is a, a continuing story. It's a narrative that every generation goes through. And, and like right now, my kids, there's tremendous anxiety among, yeah. you know, teenagers today. And probably a lot more because of these things, you know, because of all the stuff that they're exposed to on this and all the stuff they get into on this. But in those days, that was before cell phones, before, uh, before the Internet and all that. Uh, in the early 90s, there was some of that going on, but not much. And, uh, and they have found all these different ways to work out their anxiety, you know, and uh, they're finding new ways now. Yeah, I mean, as a parent, what was it like for you when your kids told you about their their issues with anxiety, or when you found out about about that? It was How old are your daughters? Seventeen. Uh, you're Seventeen and twenty. Okay. My twenty-year-old, when she was eleven, um, was diagnosed with a thing called pandas, which is a result of a strep infection. Mm -hmm. And ten percent of kids get this, and the strep infection causes the the, an autoimmune response and the, mm. the, your immune system begins to attack your cerebral cortex and it's very frightening and it causes a lot of anxiety and you get a lot of phobias and all that. So it was really frightening for a while. And, uh, but you know, she's not gotten that under control now. But I mean, all the kids, all their friends uh, have some form of anxiety and it's, uh, depending upon where the scale is. Now we are the only family among all our kids' friends where we stayed together. I mean, the only one. Wow. Yeah. So all of our, my kids' friends have uh, broken homes. Oh, wow. You play, you play sort of a strict dad in the film. So I got to know, in your real-life relationship, who is more strict, you or Elisa, when it comes to disciplining your children? <laughs> I'm not sure the word strict is really, you know, part of our lexicon in our household. <laughs> but it is, really. I mean, they have strict curfews um, that are enforced not always uh, strictly. But nevertheless, okay. they have them. And they're supposed to be home at a certain time. Um, and now this gives us the opportunity to know where they are at all times. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, and yeah. they're fine with that. I mean, one of the things that sort of struck me about the movie in juxtaposition to regard with the times that we're living in now was, you know, your character being like you, you know, to the to the kids, you dealt with this these issues. You had some of these issues, and you dealt with them better than your sisters dealing with them. How do you think? You know, it's and it's, some of it seems like maybe the the young man sort of like, I don't want to say, I was, I was certainly like affected by parental expectations. You know, how do you feel like we've, has the way we deal with these issues changed 
from the 90s to now? Like, do we view them through a different lens? Are we sure. more sensitive to it, more keen? Well, more I think, you know, look, when I grew up, and I grew up in the 50s and the 60s, 50s and 60s, <laughs> uh, um, the, you know, parents uh, were, were much more strict, and they also didn't pay that much attention to the kids. I mean, we are now kind of like helicopter parents, like everywhere. You, mm -hmm. you know, we read books about parenting, we go to, you know, clinics about parenting, they, we, kids, they, they have mommy and me for crying out loud, which they didn't have when I was born. When I, when I, my mother smoked two packs of cigarettes and drank martinis throughout the, my entire pregnancy when I was gestating, you know, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that wow. was a whole different ball of wax in those days. Yeah, so we've got a clip for you, uh, of you. Do you want to set it up? Do you want to give us the, the little... This I'm, is you it, explaining mm. to, the, to your yeah, son, to, to the, about, her, about the sister, about having, the sister, the sister yeah. having some uh, psychological issues. Yeah. So, all right, let's take a look. She's been on antidepressants since she was eight years old, if you can believe it. We've done everything we could to shield you from it. She has our legs. She just never figured out how to use them. You know, you, you had some of the same, I mean, well, similar issues when you were a kid. But, I mean, you, you learned how to deal with it. Because you have discipline, Thomas. Your sister, she's just different. Was it emotional wow. making this film? Because you were talking before about one of your daughters having anxiety issues. It must be quite harrowing to go back and put yourself in this position. Absolutely, this role. no. And, and that there was a lot of resonance for me because I had gone through that experience with my daughter. Yeah. Um, and this is a very personal film for Will because uh, he had an issue in his family that was very similar to the one in this in the film. Um, and this is maybe somewhat cathartic for him to. to he wrote the, the book uh, mm. first. The, he wrote the, the book, No Alternative. That came out and then made the film based on the book. So it's a very personal story for him. And for me, too, because of the relationship I had with my daughter and what, what she went through. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you talk about so openly about your daughter and her struggle with anxiety and maybe depression. Do you think balancing the fame and being a celebrity, has that taken a toll on them? That's a really good question, you know, and Lisa and I ask ourselves that all the time. You know, what, what effect does it to having parents who have paparazzi following them around and, you know, when you're little kids and, and, uh, and you go out and people know who you are and strangers come up to you and all that, does that have an effect in the long run on, on the kids? Or, or the, do the kids have an expectation to somehow become as famous or as successful as the parents? Is there a lot of pressure on them for, for that or whatever? And we try to temper that as much as possible and say, look, you guys, you know, you're going to find your own path. You're going to find your own passion. And that's what we did. And we took that passion and we spun it into a successful career. You'll do the same thing, whatever it is. Harry, thanks so much for coming in. Guys, No Alternative is available now on iTunes, Amazon, Prime Video, Blu-ray, DVD. Um, are, you a, are you a Beyonce fan at all? Of course, yeah. You are? Great. Are you interested in this Netflix documentary that she's going to be doing? So Absolutely. there's a documentary yeah. about Coachella uh, yeah. that's going to be coming out.